Now, I'm at the Pipe Life Academy in Cork in Ireland, and I'm talking to Mike Geary. I've just had a tour of his establishment here, seen all the different things they're up to. And I've just got a few questions I'd like to ask him afterwards because we had a look at all those. You can see that in the videos, but I just want to kind of nail him down a little bit because heat pumps, renewables, the whole thing is still a very contentious issue. Absolutely. In the UK. Now, I know in Ireland there's been a much bigger uptake, there's been a much bigger uptake in the whole of the rest of Europe. But the UK is resisting, even with the increased, the £7,500 that the government is now throwing at people to install a heat pump, there's still a lot of people who are going, it's not for me. One of the issues which we get over and over again is noise, and there's planning permission things which are being rejected so a lot of people who want them can't have them because they can't satisfy the noise thing. You've explained to me that you've got a very very quiet heat pump out there. Yeah the design of the fin of the particularly the Medea unit um, overcomes the tolerance or the, the, the turbulence that's caused by the air which is hugely reduced so it's one of the quietest in the market so it should overcome those issues. So if people have got a problem with the noise they might do well to look at that or listen to that unit Absolutely. if they could yeah. and satisfy themselves before putting it in. The other thing which you know is unavoidable is the running costs because although we've done things with Heat Geek where they've showed that you can make a saving over a gas boiler for example or even an oil boiler, uh, a lot of people are finding this isn't the case. A lot of people are finding that their bills have gone sky high since they've had a heat pump. So have you had any experience in this area or not? Yeah, we certainly do. I think every, every heat pump company supplier has these um, queries that come in from time to time or uh, maybe complaints from time to time. Um, there's many, many reasons that the running costs would go up, um, particularly bad design. Uh, particularly in the retrofit market, uh, we always say here, the heat pump should be the last thing that goes into the house. There's no point in having a house uh, back in, built back in the 80s within the, the building regulations of the 80s and deciding, oh, I'm going to get a heat pump, I'm going to put a heat pump in, I'm going to get my £7,000 grant or whatever the grant is at, uh, at whatever particular time it is. Um, but that should not be the case. Uh, we could sell here in Pipe Life, we could sell twice as many heat pumps in the morning if we sold the heat pump to everyone who wanted one. But we have to do a due diligence in terms of um, satisfaction of the end user being the homeowner. Bearing in mind, the heat pump is running at a much, much lower temperature than what the previous oil boiler or gas boiler mm. uses or uh, sends out in terms of temperature. Um, the running cost issue, first of all, there's a perception out there. Okay. Again, in the retrofit market, they say, right, we're spending £3,000 a year on oil or we're getting 3,000 litres of oil or whatever it is. If I get rid of my oil boiler and put in a heat pump, that's £3,000 saving per year. That is not at all the case. <laughs> yeah. um, the electricity bill will go up. Okay. There's no uh, exception. Uh, it will go up. And I think a lot of the complaints that are out there is the, the individual's perception of how much that's going to go up. You will, have, you will get the, the feedback from people, ah, yeah, it will go up a bit, but not to the extent of the 3,000. It, it could go up to that level and, and beyond it. But again, it, particularly with the retrofit market, the heat pump should be the last thing that goes in. The windows need to be upgraded, the, the, the insulation possibly on the walls need to be upgraded, the level of control in heating systems that, that, that have to be upgraded. And then we'll discuss, yeah, okay, let's look, let's talk about put, fitting a heat pump into the house. We must move away from that idea of, um, you know, put a heat pump in and it's, it's, it's going to fix all our, all our issues. When we're designing a heating system, we're trying to achieve the most economical way of running the, the system. Um, however, it does come at a price. Um, and again, uh, in terms of fossil fuels, it's still much, much cheaper. In the new build market, the houses are so well insulated. Obviously, that's going to be a much more economical um, uh, system outside of a retrofit. Um, but unfortunately, it is a necessary evil. If you want comfort in your house, you have to pay for it. Yeah. Um, and I think because you're getting your, uh, the, the people are getting their bills on a regular basis, they're forgetting that they had to fill the oil tank last April at a cost of a thousand pounds. But because it's, it's, it's coming in and it's more evident, obviously, in the winter months, uh, you have a higher demand of electricity. 
there is an awful higher an awful lot higher demand on applications within the house we're going down the road of electric cars um, a, a, a big move over to electric appliances um, you know ovens hobs etc yeah, there's yeah. a big move away from gas and all that contributes to the electricity bill obviously um, I do think uh, it, it, in an unfair way um, the heat pump gets the blame okay because it's physically the biggest electrical appliance in the house so therefore it must be using the more 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 electricity but uh, when we've done research into um, complaints of, of running costs of heat pumps um, we would take that uh, we'd monitor it over 12 months there's okay. no point in you know monitoring for a week we need we need a, a, a wide spectrum yeah. in terms of in and, terms and, of and, and years are different you could have a cold year or warm year Absolutely. you know so, so yeah exactly but generally when we do a deep dive into a running cost issue it is very rarely the heat pump you know you can have uh, you know um, a human error an immersion or electric heater may have been left on but generally the heat pump is not the cause of the, oh, the really? electricity bill and some people say well <laughs> You would say that, wouldn't you? You know, because of course, obviously you're selling heat pumps. Absolutely, but, but to be fair, we're 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 in the the heating industry or the the, the pipe manufacturing industry yeah. for over 55 years. We don't say these things blasé. We 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 say it with 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 um, with research behind it. What's very volatile at the moment is the electric electricity supply market. There's so many different companies offering so many different options. There's introductory offers there that you get a very, very low base price on electricity. Yeah. And year two, that increases exponentially. That's when we get the phone call saying, we have a problem with the heat pump. Um, but when we go out, we'll put a, a, a monitor on the heat pump. You can monitor remotely. And generally, it's the fluctuation in price of electricity is the root cause or something externally. So what difference practically on the running cost, do you think weather compensation makes? Because some people run it without that and some people run it with it, rely on it. So do you think that's a huge, significant difference or what? Yeah, definitely. You, you can, you can, we, we've experienced savings up to 25% over a year. Um, now, there is a, a, an understanding as well that, uh, particularly with radiators, there's a, a little bit of confusion uh, particularly if, if the homeowner experienced life within a fossil fuel environment. Yeah. The days of a wet day, cold day, they come in, put their bum up against the radiator and it's lovely and warm, etc. Absolutely, et we all love that. Yeah. Yes, indeed, <laughs> I've experienced myself. But um, with low temperature applications, that, that, that's gone. You, the, the radiator is never very, very warm. No, it's uh, surprisingly, sometimes you think, well, this thing's hardly on. How the hell is it heating exactly. this house? Exactly, and, and it's, it's psychological. If your radiator yeah. isn't on or if your underfloor heating isn't on, it must feel cold. But then when we ask, you know, if, if a query comes in, you know, the radiators aren't working, well, what is your thermostat saying? Is thermostat saying 21 degrees? Well, it, 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 it must, is working. It, it is working. Yeah. Um, so there's a bit of understanding in uh, in that, um, and it's it's quite it's quite difficult to explain to people. Well, your heating system isn't at a high temperature because the outside air temperature is high. Um, so some people say, look, I just want a fixed temperature. I don't yeah. want this water compensation. I just want my house to be hot when I want it hot, and I don't care. And we can we can set that up as well. Uh, but definitely, you're you're looking at twenty to thirty percent saving on a weather compensation. That's incredible. I, it's I, incredible. I had no idea it was that much. Yeah. Actually, I'm thinking I'm maybe I'll put one in my own house. But uh, okay. but yeah. So on from one day to another, the weather compensation for those people who don't know, you've got an outside sensor which you're telling me is actually in the heat pump. Correct. That's measuring the air temperature outside and it's so, modulating the heat pump. Is that right? Exactly that. So the, 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 the colder the weather gets outside, yep. so we have, say, if the outside air temperature is five degrees or below, we're asking that heat pump to generate 40 degree flow temperature. But as the outside air temperature increases, so it might be 10 or 12 degrees outside, well, that heat pump knows, okay, it's, 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 it's warmer outside, so I'm only going to generate 30, 33 degrees uh, temperature. So during the very, very cold period of anything below, say, 5 degrees, it's going to be running at 40 degrees anyway. But in, in, when you're coming out of the winter months and going into the winter months, well, the heat pump is going to be um, uh, running at a much, much lower temperature and therefore affecting the the efficiency of yeah. it and obviously in the summer months you're not really using the heating you're only using it for hot water which which is you know the heat pumps are incredibly efficient 
in terms of um, in terms of that. So in the overall uh, 12 months, year on year, it's much cheaper to run it on weather compensation. However, there's a comfort level within the house that needs to be achieved. And so when it's running on hot water, it's knocking the weather compensation out. That's not even relevant because it's going all into the hot water. Exactly. Cylinder so so when, it's done that job. Correct. So when, when the heat pump goes into hot water production, and when I say hot water, it's the, the water that's come out, out of the taps and the showers. Um, the heat pump will divert over to hot water when there's a hot water demand. Um, and the heat pump will ramp up to 100% to heat that tank at the fastest possible rate. Uh, can you get 60 degrees out of it? Yeah, um, with the, some of the heat pumps that we have, uh, there's a flow temperature of uh, 65 degrees, and that'll give you a tank temperature comfortably of 61 degrees. So it's, uh, Have you got any idea about the COP of that? Of that the efficiency it, must drop, must it? it? The 60. Of, yeah, so, so the harder the heat pump works, obviously the, the, the efficiency uh, drops. So the, the, the COP or the SCOP, the seasonal, seasonal performance, yeah. um, that does drop down. But again, much, much more efficient than a fossil fuel or, or, or an electrical immersion. Way, way more efficient. So you could, you, could drop the, you could see COPs of maybe two. Yeah. Uh, bearing in mind, uh, two is it's still two hundred percent efficient yeah. over a, over a okay. standard electric immersion, which is a hundred percent. Which is a hundred percent efficient. Okay. Yeah. So generally, we like to design the systems that the heat pump is about four to five hundred percent efficient. Yeah. Again, you're, you're, you you you've you've challenges with outside air temperature, etc. Uh, but over a period of uh, over a period of a year, that's the kind of numbers that we'd like to be looking at. Um, kind of a COP of you know mid threes to four. Okay. So the take home for anybody who's thinking of having a heat pump is, what, what do you advise first? What's the number one thing they do? The number one thing to do is they engage with a reputable installer, okay? Um, uh, an installer that has experience in heat pumps, an installer that's not just looking for a fast buck and do their, their, their own uh, due diligence on um, information that's out there. There's loads of information readily available. Um, I'm a salesman myself. Yeah. Oh, do yeah. not accept uh, uh, <laughs> advice from a salesman. Uh, someone that is in the industry long enough that will stand over the system and, um, and basically do the research, take responsibility themselves, uh, engage in a, an experienced installer, reputable installer, and uh, you're halfway there. So then heat loss calculations. Yeah, get, so engage with an engineer. If the installer, he may or may not uh, be able to do the calculation, the heat loss calculations. Uh, there's plenty of companies out there. We do it ourselves here for the installers. So we'll do a full technical assessment on the house. We will do a heat loss calculation on the house, size the radiators or underfloor heating accordingly, and as well as that, size the heat pump accordingly. Uh, we'll do a full designer sign-off. So we're taking the responsibility really from the installer. We're taking responsibility that... Uh, the design will meet the demands of the house, and that's when the warranty engage, is engaged. Then it's a ten-year warranty uh, for the for the heat pump and different warranties for the different components. Um, so once you get the design right, it's installed correctly, and a, a part of the commissioning. So when when there's a handover, we need to sit down with the homeowner and show them how to use how best use their heating system. It's not That's just, interesting because a lot of them are thinking, oh, I switch it on, I switch it off and so on. But with a heat pump, I know that you just let the heat pump work it out. You leave it ticking over yeah. and it's maintaining that heat. Yeah, and that's, the, that, that's down to the level of control. So you set your temperatures at a, at a comfort temperature that they want. Leave the heat pump, do the rest. It's working on weather compensation. Um, and, and people's lifestyle is different. We can tailor it to whatever their lifestyle is. I would tailor the heating system differently to... Um, my scenario versus a retired couple or people working from home, there's different ways we can tailor it to, to run it as the maximum efficiency with maximum comfort. It's interesting because although I know about, you know, the U values and all the rest of it, when you look at the difference in, say, cork, where it is nicely tucked in down here, you know, fairly sheltered, I'd say, then you go out onto the west coast of Ireland and you've got next stop America, you've got the wind blowing in, and even though the U values, the chill factor there is it's incredible, isn't it? So, yeah. so when you start trying to work that out, how you stay warm in those coastal houses with 
you know, the absolute temperature is one thing, but, you know, we know that it says, OK, it's five degrees outside, but it feels like minus five. Yeah. Because yep. of that wind chill. So there's a lot to think about, isn't there? Is there is a lot and to think perception about. Perception is very important as there well. Is, yeah, there is a lot to think about. And, and uh, luckily, we're on an island. We don't yeah. have a huge variation in temperature, but we'll always go to the worst case scenario. You don't have a huge variation in Ireland. I've been on that we're, West Coast. We're used to it. We're used to it, I think, is the, is, is the difference. Oh, is the difference. Yeah. But, but we tailor it to worst case scenario. Yeah. So we will go, when we're designing a system, we'll take an average lowest value temperature Got of it. the previous, uh, an average of the, of the previous five years. Okay. So our, our designs are changing. Climate is changing. Um, but currently, when we're designing a system, we're, we're designing, designing it at minus three outside. Are you? Yeah. Ah. So, so, so when we're designing a system, we have to meet the demands of the house when it's minus three outside. But we have experienced in, in, in the past uh, conditions that went below minus three. But to be fair, um, we, we've had no issues. The, the, the heat pumps meet the demands. Um, you do have um, um, humidity issues here in Ireland as well. Uh, particularly it goes into uh, defrost, uh, can go into defrost more the colder the weather, the, the more humid, um, mm. the, the more moisture in the air. Yeah, so the um, damper, yeah. So. But that's the, uh, that, 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 that we'd engage with our, with our install. The homeowner doesn't really have to worry about that. That's, that's, we cover that in all our designs. Brilliant. All right. Well, thank you very much indeed. I've learned a little bit more there. I learned a lot walking around your uh, academy. Perfect. Your displays. Great to see you. And hopefully, anybody listening has learned a bit more. But if you want more information on any of us, then just go to our website, the Skill Builder website, because we've got a page dedicated to Pipe Life telling you all about their solutions and their renewables.